Now let's turn to Section 8, Novel Synthetic Opioids, Their Clinical Manifestations, Diagnosis, and Treatment. Novel synthetic opioid users seek the same subjective experience as do other opioid users, that is, a euphoria or high, relaxation, and sedation. Many opioid users prefer the experience of heroin or prescription opioid analgesics to that of fentanyl or its analogs, but use synthetic opioids because of their greater availability, especially with the increasing crackdown on prescription opioid analgesics. Other advantages are their lower cost in the illicit marketplace and non-detectability on drug screening tests. The immediate adverse effects are the same as those with other opiates, such as stupor, confusion, dizziness, slow and shallow breathing, pupillary constriction or meiosis, orthostatic hypotension, agitation, nausea, constipation, urinary retention or urgency, and itching or pruritus. Overdose on novel synthetic opioids, like overdose on other opioids, is associated with respiratory depression, cyanosis, bradycardia, and coma. Less common are hypotension, pulmonary edema, and decreased intestinal motility, or ileus. It is usually coma or respiratory depression that bring novel synthetic opioid users to medical attention, with the latter resulting in death. High doses may also call chest wall rigidity, which can hinder resuscitation efforts. Cases of eventually fatal overdose may present with blue coloration of the lips from anoxia, gurgling breath sounds, and foaming of the mouth. Some cases of intoxication with novel synthetic opioids without the fentanyl chemical structure, such as MT-45, have been reported with symptoms not usually associated with opioid intoxication, such as dry eyes, dermatitis, and elevated liver enzymes. However, given the small number of such cases and the uncertain purity of the drug, it is possible these adverse effects were not due to the synthetic opioid itself, but were due to some other drug or contaminant. Now let's turn to diagnosis and treatment. The diagnosis of synthetic opioid use is usually made by history and or observation of a typical opioid intoxication syndrome or by a prompt response to administration of naloxone, which is a selective mu opioid receptor antagonist. Routine drug screening tests typically detect morphine, its semi-synthetic analogs, and their metabolites, such as heroin, but do not detect novel synthetic opioids. The identification of conventional opioids, such as heroin or codeine, on drug testing does not rule out novel synthetic opioid use, as novel synthetic opioids are often mixed with conventional opioids or sold mislabeled as such. If the patient is unwilling or unable, for example because of sedation, to give a reliable history, attempts should be made to obtain a history from collateral informants, such as accompanying friends or relatives or emergency medical personnel who transported the patient to the hospital. Drug samples, packaging, or paraphernalia that the patient recently used may also be helpful. Novel synthetic opioids are used by a variety of routes of administration, so it may be sold in a variety of dosing formulations, such as powder for intranasal or injection administration, tablet or capsule for oral administration, adsorbed on blotter paper or on a patch for transdermal administration. Because of their high potency, a dose of synthetic opioid may occupy very little volume. Synthetic opioids may be identified by the brand name on the package. Popular brands include Apache, China White, China Girl, Chinatown, Dance Fever, Tango and Cash, Synthetic Heroin, Green Jollies, and Street Oxy. However, new brands are constantly appearing on the market, so it is advisable to check the brand name on the internet. The websites of the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration, DEA, at www.dea.gov, and the U.S. National Institute on Drug Abuse, NIDA, at www.drugabuse.gov, can be useful sources of information. The diagnosis of novel synthetic opioid intoxication overdose is often suggested by observation of a typical opioid intoxication syndrome, consisting of sedation or stupor, slurred speech, respiratory depression, and pupillary constriction. The presence of pupillary constriction distinguishes opioid intoxication from intoxication with alcohol, benzodiazepines, or other sedative hypnotics, in which pupillary constriction rarely occurs. Confirmation can be made by administration of naloxone, which promptly reverses the signs and symptoms of opioid intoxication, assuming that a sufficient naloxone dose is given, as further explained below. If signs and symptoms are only partially reversed, this suggests a mixed overdose of novel synthetic opioids plus another type of drug, such as sedative hypnotics. The specific treatment for novel synthetic opioid intoxication or overdose is naloxone, 
a selective mu opioid receptor antagonist which blocks the action of the opioid at the receptor, thereby reversing the intoxication. The clinical goal is prompt reversal of life-threatening manifestations such as respiratory depression and coma without precipitating severe acute opioid withdrawal. Naloxone is currently available in four different dosage forms. First, there is a liquid solution containing 0.4 milligrams per milliliter. Second, there is a single-dose auto-injector available in a 2.0 milligram dose. Third, there is a multi-dose nasal atomizer, which delivers a 1 milligram in 1 milliliter dose. And fourth, there is a single-dose nasal spray available in a 0.4 or 2.0 milligram doses, both contained in 0.1 milliliter. The optimal naloxone dose to treat novel synthetic opioid intoxication or overdose is not yet established. Because of the higher potency of novel synthetic opioids, experts recommend an initial dose of 2 mg injected or 4 mg intranasal rather than the 0.4 mg intravenous dose often recommended for heroin overdose. The naloxone dose may need to be repeated several times at 2-3 to three minute intervals, especially if the patient has taken novel synthetic opioids orally, which have a longer duration of action. Some patients have needed cumulative naloxone doses of up to 10 to 20 milligrams. In every case, the dose and dosing interval should be titrated based on the patient's actual response, with the goal of restoring the respiratory rate to 8 to 10 breaths per minute. Of key importance is administering naloxone as soon as possible, as synthetic opioids may induce life-threatening respiratory depression within minutes. Patients should be monitored for at least one to two hours after resuscitation with periodic checking of vital signs, although not necessarily in a medical setting. This ensures prompt readministration of naloxone and provision of oxygen and intravenous fluids should this become clinically indicated. Referral to evaluation for opioid use disorder and long-term treatment is essential as the strongest risk factor for fatal synthetic opioid overdose is a prior overdose. Abrupt cessation of chronic or excessive synthetic opioid use often results in a withdrawal syndrome with features similar to, but more intense than, those associated with cessation of use of conventional opioids. The risk of withdrawal increases if the patient has been increasing their amount of use because of the development of tolerance. Acute withdrawal can also be precipitated by administration of mu opioid receptor antagonists such as naloxone. Typical signs and symptoms include dysphoric mood, such as anxiety, irritability, or depression, sometimes to the point of suicidal ideation, insomnia, muscle and bone aches, chills and fever, sweating, pyloerection, commonly known as goosebumps, diarrhea, abdominal cramps, lacrimation or excessive tearing, rhinorrhea or nasal congestion, pupillary dilation or medriasis, and yawning. These are also the typical signs and symptoms of conventional opioid withdrawal. The presence of medriasis, lacrimation, and rhinorrhea distinguish opioid withdrawal from sedative hypnotic withdrawal. We are not aware of any published clinical trials of treatment for novel synthetic opioid withdrawal, but the treatments available for withdrawal from conventional opioids are likely to be helpful. Several clinical trials of the mu opioid receptor agonist methadone or buprenorphine, which are also used for the long-term treatment of opioid use disorder, show that short-term treatment is effective for opioid withdrawal including withdrawal from prescription semi-synthetic opioid analgesics. Clinical management involves observation and monitoring until withdrawal symptoms have resolved and the patient is comfortable. In more severe cases, supportive and symptomatic treatment may also be needed, such as intravenous fluids for dehydration and acetaminophen for pain or headache. Depression and suicidal ideation usually resolve as withdrawal wanes, unless there is a comorbid mood disorder. Antidepressant treatment should be reserved for cases with depression persisting more than several days or a known independent mood disorder. Chronic or excessive novel synthetic opioid use may result in development of a substance use disorder, analogous to that which develops with chronic use of conventional opioids. About 10 to 30 percent of opioid users develop an opioid use disorder, depending on the potency of the opioid and the route of administration. It is not known what proportion of novel synthetic opioid users develop an analogous synthetic opioid use disorder. The core concept is continued use of the substance despite the individual knowing that they suffer adverse consequences from such use. There is no such formal diagnosis in the DSM-5 or ICD-10, but the diagnosis could be made by generalizing from the criteria provided for opioid and other substance use disorders.
Several clinical trials show that long-term treatment with buprenorphine or methadone is effective for treatment of substance use disorder on pharmaceutical opioid analgesics, including semi-synthetic opioids, and is significantly more effective than psychological treatment alone. Now let us summarize the key points. First, overdose can cause life-threatening coma and respiratory depression, so it needs immediate treatment. Intoxication can be distinguished from other designer drug intoxication by pupillary constriction and prompt response to naloxone. Naloxone, at an initial dose of 2 mg injected or 4 mg intranasal, is the indicated treatment for synthetic opioid overdose. And finally, novel synthetic opioid withdrawal use disorder may be treated with buprenorphine or methadone.